Hello and welcome to the July 28th issue of iTrust's MoneyCast. We've seen so many foolish mistakes being made when it comes to people changing jobs, so we thought we'll put together a little show for you on, you know, 10 things to keep in mind as far as your personal finances are concerned when moving jobs. So I'm going to consult my notes over here. Hopefully this will make you smarter around uh, the activities related to moving jobs. So the first thing on our list is, you know, a higher salary shouldn't be the main purpose uh, or the stimulus for your move. You should be looking after a lot of many of the softer issues around, are you getting more responsibility? Is this the right career move for yourself? Uh, do you have uh, a good brand name at the company that you're working at or planning to work at? It shouldn't be just about money. Uh, the second thing relates to the timing of your move. So many people in interviews say, you know, I'm going to be getting a salary hike of 20% in another two months during my annual appraisal. I'm going to move only if I get 25%. Well, if you're so confident about your annual appraisal giving you that 20% hike, why don't you wait until then? You're going to be seen as a lot more credible after you've got the salary hike rather than just uh, getting someone to believe that you know that hike would be given to you. The third thing is negotiating your cost of company or CTC. Uh, you know what you should be maximizing is your cash in hand. So even if your new job is giving you the same CTC as the previous job, try and structure your CTC in such a manner that the cash that you receive in hand is much higher. And believe me, there's ways that your payroll or accounting department can structure your cash in hand to be higher than what your previous job might have offered you. The fourth thing is pricing yourself out of the market. Again, a very, very common phenomenon we're seeing right now. So many people who are at a junior level are managed to get very, very high salaries for no reason other than they move their jobs very frequently, often in rapid succession. So the high salaries are not a function of their experience or their skill level, but rather just because they were able to negotiate a better base pay every time. You know, if your skill level is not rising commensurately, then you're going to be ending up at a dead end because there will come a time when your new employer wants you for the value that you can add to the organization rather than just giving in to the demand that you have of, oh, the expectation is an X percent salary increase and so I ought to be given that. So just be careful about that and don't price yourself out of the job market. The fifth thing is performance evaluation criteria. Uh, you know, keep in mind at the time of signing up for the job what your performance evaluation criteria are going to be at the time of your annual bonus. Make sure that those targets are realistic. Don't set yourself up for failure. Doesn't mean you should be stretching yourself for the new job. Just make sure you understand in no ambiguous terms what is expected of you so that you can at least get very close to meeting, if not beating, your performance targets. The sixth thing relates to your notice period. You know, be courteous and have a certain professional respect for somebody who's employed you in the past and fulfill your notice period. Just, don't just leave your previous employer hanging. It's an increasingly small word. Word gets around and people might, uh, you know, see you as developing a reputation of somebody who does not respect the employer you work for, particularly if yours is a niche industry. So understand that you need to respect the notice period or maybe you could even buy out your notice period from your previous employer. The seventh thing relates to your Form 16 and tax-related papers. Uh, at the end of the year, call up your HR department from your previous job, get them to give you a Form 16 uh, if you happen to have changed jobs in the middle of the financial year, and pass that on to your new employer so that you know they can evaluate whether the right amount of taxes have been deducted at source or not. Similarly, make sure you carry with you your uh, relieving letter, your no-due certificate, and numerous other you know, paperwork that you might have to indulge in at the time of moving one job to another job. Make sure you have copies of all that readily available with you. The eighth thing is shifting your provident fund and your superannuation and other retirement accounts. This can be a huge administrative hassle for you if you're not on top of this. So make sure at the time of your departure, you get all the necessary paperwork related to your PF and superannuation. The ninth thing is employee stock ownership plans. If you've been eligible for a plan in your previous job and you were granted options in your previous job, understand whether you are eligible to cash those at the time of departure if your stock options have vested or not. Don't leave value on the table. And if you're leaving a lot of value on the table in the very least, I think it's going to be reasonable of you to ask your new employer to compensate you with a similar option grant within a few months of you joining the new organization so that economically you're not any worse off in your new job. And finally, take care of uh, insurance needs from one job to another. 
you know, your previous job might have been offering you and your family members some kind of life insurance or health insurance. Remember that during the transitional period to a new job, all that coverage would have stopped and you need to have some health and life insurance cover of your own because accidents can and do happen unannounced. Similarly, you want to understand from your new employer what kind of coverage is available to you, uh, in how many months will that coverage actually kick in if you've got to serve a minimum period of the new organization, and the scope of that coverage in terms of the number of family members that are covered, and the quantum of coverage, i.e. what's the amount of coverage that you're getting in terms of you know, the sum assured or the health insurance coverage that you have for hospitalization. So hopefully these 10 tips will make you a little bit smarter about moving jobs as far as your personal finances are concerned. And good luck with whichever job you end up signing up for. Thanks a lot.